If I were to ask you how much luck is involved in succeeding as a doctor or a physician, what would your answer be? Can you place succeeding as a doctor on the luck versus skill continuum? Think about this. Where would you place succeeding as a doctor on this continuum? Most students in my MBA class answer that success as a doctor is all skill and zero luck. Perhaps you would agree that there is no luck in succeeding as a doctor. But as we have already learned, we cannot measure the role of luck in any field unless we define what we mean by success. If success means being really good at performing a particular surgery, then yes, succeeding as a doctor is mostly skill and little luck. But if success means building an expert reputation in your chosen field of medicine, then luck will play a bigger role. And if success means becoming the head of your department or leading a hospital, then there is definitely a lot of luck involved. Again, how much luck is involved in succeeding as a lawyer? If success means drafting a good agreement, then it's all skill, no luck. If success means winning litigations, then some luck is definitely involved. However, if success means building an expert reputation in your community, then a lot more luck is required. And if success means building a successful law firm, then an incredible amount of luck is required. Similarly, how much luck is involved in succeeding as a software engineer? If success means writing great code, then it's all skill. If success means becoming a respected team lead or successfully leading an important project, then a lot more luck is required. And if success means becoming CTO at a large software corporation, a great deal of luck is required. If you define success as sufficiency in your career, performing great surgery as a doctor, preparing perfect draft agreements as a lawyer, or writing great code as a software engineer, by your own definition of success, you will not operate in a dynamic environment. You will control most of the variables that will cause you to succeed or fail. You are also unlikely to be affected by human competition because competition cannot really make you worse at doing surgery, drafting an agreement or writing code. Hence, if you define success as sufficiency in your career, luck will play little role in your success. However, for many people, career goals are not constant. Career goals change as time passes and people advance in their career. Dynamic elements like reputation and power start to creep in. And with this, people's definition of success starts to change from sufficiency to domination. Sometimes, one may not even realize that one's definition of success itself has changed. But if success for you is domination, life will be like poker, not like chess. You cannot avoid the role of luck if success for you is domination and you must play accordingly. In the next video, I will present the success equation, a framework that relates luck, skill and success in life if success is domination. Now let's use our discussion so far to plot entrepreneurship on the luck versus skill continuum. If success for you in entrepreneurship means making sure that your career is not hindered and that you get a better next job after your startup fails, then success in entrepreneurship needs no luck, it's all skill. If getting acquired hired means success for you, then some luck is involved. If success is a small or large acquisition, a lot more luck is required. And if success means getting your startup to a successful IPO, then an incredible amount of luck is required. Hey there, I'm KJ Saxena, founder of Relentless VC. The video you just watched is part of the Venture Capital and Entrepreneurship Specialization, which is available absolutely for free on relentless.ventures. Go check it out. If you're a tech startup founder and want to raise money from us, you should apply on our website. Lastly, if you like this video, do subscribe and share it with your friends.